ideas of hypotheses. Yeah, not oh, no, 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 lots of ideas. Not there. There. No, there's plenty of, plenty of, of suggestions. There's the dark matter that uh, is thought maybe it's, it's uh, the supersymmetric, uh, uh, supersymmetric particles, and then there's going to be some answers to these questions coming up in, in, in coming years. Uh, there are some, some good experiments being planned for, for testing them. Eventually we'll find out what it is. The point is that there's, there's absolutely nothing in it that requires any external element, any non-physical element, any spiritual element, or any, uh, uh, any, anything that violates uh, uh, physics, physical principles that we know. It's just going to be some new kind of stuff that... Uh, but it means that the universe act not as it would if it weren't there. I mean, it's making it act completely different uh, than, you know, the critical, uh, uh, The critical density? No, it doesn't. It's, it's, in fact, the beauty of... It doesn't act like yeah, critical density. This is, this is a great story, actually, because when, before the dark energy was discovered, this is before the was discovery, around 1998, I guess it was, that the universe, was, uh, several independent groups discovered uh, that the, uni the universe's expansion was actually accelerating, when they were looking for the opposite, they were looking for it to be decelerating, and the only way they could explain that was by some kind of repulsive gravity. Well, at the same time, people were trying to uh, reconcile the fact that on the one hand, me measurements with cosmic microwave background were consistent with this flat universe that, that was predicted by, by inflation. This is the universe of en total energy zero. Uh, because dark matter was just not enough to, comp to, to uh, I mean, it's been long known that visible matter uh, uh, could not produce this balancing effect that I'm talking about, uh, where, where the uh, uh, gravitational en uh, potential energy cancels the positive energy of, of matter. But uh, it was thought that the dark matter uh, would do it, and then they kept looking and finding evidence, and lots of evidence for the dark matter now, uh, uh, was enough, and it looked like the, co the cosmological theory that, was, that people came up with in 1980, called the inflationary cosmological model, was going to be falsified. And then, surprise, totally unexpected, these independent groups discover the universe is accelerating, and that energy that's causing this acceleration, they call the dark energy, just the, exactly the amount they needed to, to compensate uh, uh, and gives you zero total energy for the universe. And so it's a beautiful example of how science operates, and when you see these things happen, when you see something, a theory just about ready to be falsified, and a new discovery is serendipitously made to just rescue the theory, you begin to believe that there's something behind these things. So we're very confident now that we have a very good understanding of, of cosmology. Okay, well, another question is you said that um, most of the space on Earth is waste. Even though the, like the water is pretty much what keeps you know the atmosphere to, from you know burning us up when uh, sun expels a little bit more energy and you know freezing when it doesn't, but the atmosphere is what keeps everything alive and the amount of water that is there. I'm pretty sure if there was less, it wouldn't work. Yeah, right. our current form of life. But why? Why wouldn't a, a, an intelligent uh, designer come up with a, a, a form of life that uh, wasn't so sensitive to all of that? Uh, not uh, because of the because of the way the Earth is, because of the water, pretty much. No, but I mean, why, why not, why not uh, in, have a form of life that could live in space, in the vacuum? Why, why do we have to uh, be so tuned to this, this Earth? Well, it's pretty obvious. We're tuned to this Earth because we evolved on this Earth the way it was. It was just a total accident that we happened to evolve on this planet. This planet was suitable for us, and, we, and, and for our form of life, and our form of life evolved on it. One final thing is, uh, you said that one of the last statements said that we're made of like n nothing that actually exists in the rest of the universe. Are you uh, challenging Carl Sagan? We're star stuff. With what? We're star stuff. We're made from the elements made in stars expelled into space. We're all carbon based. Yeah, yeah, but that's only 3.5 percent of the universe. He didn't know that when he said that. <laughs> what do you mean 3.5 percent? I mean everything from nuclear. Nuclear fusion created all the elements that are on Earth right now that was made inside the stars. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But but the total amount of matter in the universe 
is, is mostly the dark matter, as you yourself said, it's mostly the dark matter and the dark energy. Sagan it's died, not the atoms. Sagan died in 96, so the dark energy uh, came out in 98. So the guy didn't know that it's only 3.5%. That's what we're we being stars that there aren't dark. Yes, but you didn't sure. know that the yeah, star stuff that. in the total is less than 4% of the observable universe because Sagan died before this information came out. I love Carl Sagan. I mean, don't, don't, don't think that uh, I would disparage him in any way. He's, he was, he, uh, he contributed so much to uh, um, the understanding of science and he understood it, he understood it uh, very well. He understood what science was at that time. Yes? Hi. Um, I am an atheist, but I'm also a skeptic. Uh, some of the... Um, what? <laughs> you, Why not? And I'm also a skeptic. Well, okay. What you, what you had listed uh, as um, the things that you were uh, using as your hypotheses to to test whether God would be, uh, things that you were to test, say that um, whether there was a creation or things, these are not necessarily things that even I as an atheist would list of what I believed a God would be. So I'm questioning whether these are necessarily What things ones that, would you take off? Um, not necessarily that I would take, well I don't believe that if there was a God that people would have necessarily superhuman powers or I, I don't believe that all people who are Christian necessarily believe in a literal truth in the Bible. Um, there are different, if my, my point is that there are different definitions of God. No, but, but when, in those two cases, uh, I'm saying that if we have the souls that we're supposed to have, then then that means it's something spiritual, it's something supernatural, that means we have supernatural elements to our lives. So therefore, that su those supernatural elements should come out. And surely, I mean, that was why there, there was this psychic research. The motivation between, uh, uh, the motivation for the psychic research that goes back to the middle part of the uh, 19th century uh, was, was to try to find evidence for the spiritual element that everybody believed we had. And, uh, they, uh, uh, there were scientists involved with this. Uh, well, I, I, and, I, and that's so, a stretch. And so, I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with your hypothesis. I don't believe that there is a God, but I'm saying that that's a stretch. Well, that's to one, say of the, that one of the, no the, no, that's one of the predictions no that I think you should have. You should, there should be evidence. If we have, if, if we have supernatural Soul, there should be evidence for that. Well, I, I don't believe, and I, I go with the old standby, that absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Yes, and that is one of the arguments I hear over and over again, and I try to be very clear that I'm going further than that. I wrote another book called uh, Has Science Found God that came out in 2003 that really said, uh, it was involved with that issue. What if the, the claims of evidence for God, God is basically is basically absent, and is absence of evidence evidence for absence? No, it's not, but it's certainly, even, but nevertheless, by itself, it's pretty good. I mean, at some point, you have to have a reason for believing in anything. I mean, when we don't have any evidence for Bigfoot, very few people believe in Bigfoot, and uh, Easter Bunny and Santa Claus and, the salt, and, and so on. You have to have some evidence before you believe in these things. So, so while it is true, while it is technically true, while it is logically true that, uh, 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 you can't totally rule out God on, on those arguments. This book attempts to go further to say, look, there are so many, there's so many consequences that the God that had played such an important role in the universe should have. Those consequences should be visible. They should be at least one or two of them. I list a whole bunch of them. Maybe you don't you don't agree with one of them or the other. And, you can, you can always apologize your way out of any one of them, certainly. But at some point, it becomes, it becomes ridiculous. You're if, just, if, you're just, 